Hello and welcome. Recently you may have seen I did some videos using chameleon mica powders with a jelly plate. Now I've used these regularly with resin um, and they're quite fun and they're great, especially on dark cardstock. They're color changing micas, so they're super fun to play with um, and they shift colors depending on the light. So I've got gold, fuchsia, green and plum. And then I've got violet, galaxy, blue, and cyan there. Now, the micas don't have a binding agent in them, so I'm going to add some gum arabic. And the proportions are a quarter or one part of this to four parts of the micas. So what this is going to do is this is going to make it so that I can watercolor with them. And um, I'm going to try another technique using just dusting the micas over a stamped image with Versamark and then misting to activate the binding agent in them. You can tell I'm measuring super, super carefully with this, which I'm not. I'm just making sure that I have at least one part of this to four parts of the mica powders. And then I'm gonna mix them together with a toothpick. Now, if I was gonna start watercoloring with these right away, I would let the water help mix them together. I'm just making a big mess here, aren't I? My toothpick is um, catching on the bottom of my palette here, which is why I'm flicking micas around. So I don't have to wait, or I don't have to have it 100% mixed. Mostly is good enough. So the very first um, technique that I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp an image with some Versamark, and then I'm going to use a fluffy brush to dust the powder over top. Now for all of the little experiments that I'm doing today, I am doing it on both white and black, just to see what the difference between the two are. I know that these are um, really impressive on a dark or black background, but I just thought it's nice to be able to compare between the two colors. Neither one is right or wrong sometimes. Sometimes it's just personal preference. And why not do the two at the same time? I really love the Galaxy one, which is why there's extra in the palette there. Now I just have a palette here that I kind of use for random things. I wrote down exactly what was in here and the colors. And once I've added water to them, these are just going to dry up, kind of like my Perfect Pearls in here. All right, so before I start, I need a little Swiffer cloth. So I'm going to stamp this butterfly stamp plus the sentiment. That can go away. We don't need to see that anymore. But I love these powders because they've just got such a beautiful shimmer to them. And um, after having success with them on the jelly plate, and if you haven't seen those videos, I will link to them down below and I will link to at least one of them at the end of this video. They've just got a beautiful, or they just turned out really, really cool and I was really impressed with them. So I was curious what they would do with watercolor by adding a binding agent to them. I'm gonna do just one at a time and I'm gonna do it on top of a scrap piece of paper so that, um, so that I keep my desk a little bit cleaner. So I'm gonna use some gold here now you can be liberal with the colors. I'm gonna mix all the different colors up. So I'm not keeping one color. I'm not do it, just doing one color at a time. It's kind of fun to see the different colors. There we go. Now let's do some galaxy on the edge of the butterfly. Now obviously any of the excess that's on here, I'm not gonna be able to reuse because they're all mixed up. Now having said that, I could reuse them all together mixed up, but obviously you can't separate the colors. Now, once you're done this, use a Swiffer cloth to just dust off the excess. And then in a second, we're gonna use a misting bottle to activate the binding agent there. Let's move this to the side. We're gonna do the same thing on some white watercolor paper. Well, it's not perfectly white, it's kind of a bit of a cream color, but a light color background. See what the difference between the two look. So I also have just plain ones here. I'm going to just watercolor on the back first, and then I've got 
two other images, one that is stamped and embossed with silver and one that is stamped and embossed with clear, just to see the difference between those two. Once again, let's grab our in there and I'm gonna try to use different colors than I used in the first one. So we're gonna be able to see the difference between the two, but they're not gonna be exactly the same. Let's do the plum on the edge of this. On this, you definitely see it a lot more clearly on the light background. So by using this brush, what that does, it makes sure that the powder has good contact with the adhesive or the, the stamped image. It also makes sure um, to dust the excess off. There we go. Now I'm just gonna move it to the side because I don't wanna get my, I don't wanna spray in there. This go in the garbage so I'm just going to lightly mist this it doesn't need to be heavy in fact if it's too heavy it's just going to start to run and bleed um, as in the powders will just kind of follow the water I'm going to do a little bit more on that butterfly there same there I'm going to put this to the side to let that dry while we're working on the next one so the next one all I'm going to do for this is I'm going to add some water to each of these um, wells here in my palette. I'm going to take this off. I've got a little pipette here. Because every technique that I'm going to do from here on is going to have water right in it. I love with these micas how they just shimmer. They've got such a, a shimmery, glittery quality to them. A little bit more. And I'm going to guess that this, the, these ones will work the same as um, when I use the Perfect Pearls. Now when I use the Perfect Pearls, the more water you add to it, the more translucent it is, the less water and more micas, the more opaque and thick the paint is gonna be. So I'm going to just mix it all up. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of each color on my background here once I've got them mixed up properly. Oh, look at that. So this is the gold. The gold actually has a little bit of a bronze tone to it. Between colors, my brush here has water in the handle. So between colors, all I'm gonna do is just squeeze on my paper towel and then clean the brush off and that's gonna make it clean for the next color. And this one here is green. Very pretty. The next color we're gonna try is the fuchsia. I'm just doing a little bit of each one um, what you could do is just do a complete background and have a bunch of each of the colors on there. I think that would be really, really pretty too. I'm gonna put a little bit more of the fuchsia here because it I kind of thinned it out when I went back over it. Now we've got plum. So you can't do this with water without adding the gum arabic or the binding agent to it. What will happen if we do this without that is once it's all dried, you're simply gonna be able to rub it off. So you definitely need to add a binding agent to it. Now in my jelly printing video, I added this to um, some gel medium and I also, used an acrylic paint to lift it from the jelly plate when I was doing the jelly printing. Those don't need to add the binding agent to them because the a paint is going to do that same um, the same thing. It's going to hold it to the paper but when you're just using water you need to add something to it. That one there is violet. Next one we're going to do is blue.
That blue is really, really pretty. Next one is Galaxy. Galaxy almost has a little bit of violet and blue kind of mixed together. Really, really pretty shimmer there. And then last but certainly not least is the Cyan. Very close in color to the violet here, but this one, when you tilt it to the light, it's got a bit of a purple tone to it. And the cyan doesn't have that. But interesting to see the different colors on the different colored backgrounds. Looks a lot more opaque and shimmery on the dark background than it does on the light background. Very cool. All right, I'm gonna set those aside to dry and we'll show you those at the end as well. So these are all, these pieces of paper are all sized um, they're cut to four inches by five and a quarter so that when they are um, dry, I can just put them on top of the card base. I am assuming this is all going to work. And I think they'll be pretty as just very simple, simple, simple cards. So that, oh, I should... I should do my white one as well. I'm gonna paint them the same colors. So this here is the plum color. This particular stamp doesn't have a whole lot of open space to it when it's embossed. So the image itself is gonna be mostly the embossing, the embossed image. But I was curious how it would look this way compared to this way where it's just clear. And basically this is kind of an embossed resist all right, so the green color, even though the green color has a little bit of a copper to it, we're gonna do that for the leaves. And on the dark, so dark cardstock, it definitely has got a bit, of a bit more of a green tone to it. And the beauty part about these backgrounds is they don't need to be um, stamped and colored perfectly. You can have some fun with them because really the wow factor is the shimmer from the powder. So on the dark cardstock it definitely has a greener tone and on the lighter cardstock it definitely has more of a coppery tone. You do see some of the green in the sunlight but it definitely has more of a copper tone to it. All right and then I'm going to just kind of do a blend of the different colors for the background. I still want to see the embossing through that so I'm not trying to put an uh, amount that's so thick that you don't see that but what I'm going to do is do the bluey greeny tone these these tones here closer to the flower and then I'll do the coppery ones no I wanted the blue I'll do the coppery ones um, on the outside of the card panel blend them together a little bit Just for fun. And I love doing things like this because I love seeing if the supplies we already have for one particular craft can be used in a different way. I think it just makes our supplies so much more valuable if we can use them in many different ways. All right, now I'm gonna flip it upside down. And I'm cleaning my brush between the colors, but I'm not being super, super careful about doing it. I'm just cleaning it lightly. For what I'm doing here, I'm not, um, worried about the colors blending with each other. So this is all kind of an experiment. And if I didn't want the colors to blend, I'd probably choose something a little bit different to experiment on. Oh, I went a little bit in that leaf, so I got some of that coming out of there, but that's okay. All right, the last color, I'm gonna do this by the flower is the cyan. And I will be going 
over between the different colors just to combine them, blend them. I like seeing the blend between the different colors. And part of the reason why I'm going quick and not being super, super careful is I don't want this video to be an hour long. I want it to be a reasonable time amount. All right, so I've got all the blue tones in there. So now let's go and do some of these coppery tones. So this one here is the gold and I'm going to go around the edges, but I'm, and I'm kind of doing a quarter, like a quarter of this is going to be gold, a quarter of it's going to be another color, but I'm also going over top of the color that I already put and kind of blending the two colors between the transition there. In my mind, I'm thinking that'll just be a little bit more interesting to look at. There we go. Now we'll go in with the green and I'm going to do up here. Those two blended together really nicely. Well, at least on the dark card stock they did. Let's see what they do on the white on the light. You definitely see a lot more of the cardstock through the lighter one, whereas the darker, um, the black watercolor paper, it definitely has a little bit more of the mica, like the mica is more the focus, whereas the lighter one, you definitely see more of the um, cardstock through it. Like it definitely lightens the color up for sure. And I will, you may have noticed, I typically will br wipe my brush off before blending between the two colors, just so that I don't have a lot of that color still left on my brush. All right, last one here is this plum color. And on this one, it actually looks like the same color as that one, but it's not. I want to see the difference between the two on the different for the different techniques, because this one here, I'm loving this dark one better than the light one. But um, for that one there, I think the light one shows that technique off a lot better than the dark cardstock or the dark watercolor paper. So these are watercolor papers that I'm doing this on. Anytime you use moisture, you want to use a watercolor paper or a mixed media paper, something that can handle the water. There we go. Wipe that off and just blend between the two a little bit. There we go. All right, I'm going to let those dry completely and then work on the other one. So the last one is one that the embossing is done in white. So I'm really wanting, sorry, not white, the embossing is clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use these colors for coloring in the butterfly, and I'm gonna use these colors for coloring in the um, surrounding areas. And just like the one before, I'm going to be blending the colors in between. What we should be seeing is the clear powder, the clear embossing is going to resist the emboss or the mica. So that part is going to stay the color of um, the watercolor paper. So this one here is fuchsia. Once I have this color down, I'm going to go back 
I'm gonna wipe my brush off and then I'm gonna go back and just blend those two colors together a little bit. You definitely see the resist on the light color a little bit more than you do on the dark color. All right, last one for the wings is this green color. I'm gonna do the gold for the body. funny that the resist is working better or you see the resist more on the light color than the dark color but I can see the outside of the, the outlines of the stamp a little bit more on the dark color than the lighter light color interesting how it works like that all right let's just blend these two colors together a little bit same with here and I'm trying to do this super quick A for length for the video, as well as I don't want the previous colors to dry before I blend the two together. All right, now let's do the gold for the body. So the real test is once these are dry, I'm gonna be um, rubbing on them just to see how uh, set those micas are but I have to say so far, I'm loving how they're looking. All right, now let's get some blue here. So I am gonna try to be a little bit more careful for this, just so that we have some clear definition between the butterfly and the sky. And so that my butterfly doesn't or the colors from my butterfly don't blend with the colors from that sky. All right, this one here is violet. Let's put that over here. And these mica powders, they come in a bunch of different colors. I just have the eight color set, but I have noticed that there's some that have more colors than this. go now I'm gonna turn this a little bit I'm gonna do the galaxy on this side here kind of losing the sentiment on the bottom on this one See it a lot more on the lighter background. All right, now the last color here was the cyan that I haven't used yet. I am gonna still put some more on the edges of the cardstock. It was just more or cardstock watercolor paper. I just wanted to make sure to get right around the butterfly, get that done. And I think what I'm gonna do to tie in the colors of the butterfly, I'm gonna use some of those colors on the outside just to pull those in a little bit more. go let's do this one here all right now I'm gonna take some of this gold here and put it in this top corner to blend those guys In a little bit. Now let's do that on this one. There we 
go. Now, let's do some green. Actually, no, I don't want to do green there. Let's do fuchsia there. I'm just noticing that if I do green, it's going to combine with this one, which is a very similar color. So I'm going to do fuchsia there. I'm going to do green on the other opposite side so that it has a chance of showing up. There we go. Now this one here. The paint definitely looks definitely looks a lot streakier with the lighter cardstock simply because you can see more of that cardstock in there. All right, let's do plum on this bottom corner here. funny sometimes when you do these experiments you don't really know exactly how they're going to turn out and there's always something that tends to surprise you a little bit and one of the things that surprises me is how streaky this one looks all right which one I'm going to do green on this one here this corner here. Now chances are this co other color here has dried so I'm not going to see a whole lot of blending but we can definitely try. see a lot more of the sentiment with the coppery colors than you do with the bluey tones for sure. So I'm going to just bring these up a little bit just so that we can see the sentiment because what's the point of it being there if we can't see it? All right, I'm going to let that dry completely. This sentiment here, we actually can't really see a whole lot. Like you can see it, but it's not um, very noticeable at all. But I'm gonna let those dry completely and I will be back to show them to you. All right, our pieces have all dried. And the beautiful thing, we're not getting any transfer from the mica. So the binding agent did its job there. I got a little bit off of that one, but it's often normal actually none from this one um it's normal to get a little bit when i use this technique with perfect pearls i dip, typically do get a little bit of mica coming off but there we go we've got all six of these here these guys are dry but there's nothing impressive or pretty about them so we've got this one here i love how that shimmers in the light this one definitely is a lot more subtle haven't decided yet if I am going to put the make these into cards because they just seem a little bit much. I think I would do this technique again and say just do the butterfly with it and then do something else say for the outside just so that the mic is really shine because I put mic over the whole thing. It's kind of in your face so I'm not sure. I doubt that they'd be impressive looking cards even though the mic turned out really really pretty just the fact that it's covering these ones especially all of it I have to say I think this one might be my favorite of the all over ones but I really like how this one turned out right down below which one was your favorite I'm interested to see whether your favorite is the same as my favorite we'll see you soon thank you so much for watching